Hey there. This is the fifth episode in a series that I and my daughter are doing on the Catechism for the Global Methodist Church. If you haven't been uh, with us on one of these episodes before, this is Susanna. Say hello, Susanna. Hello. Susanna, is it a good day? Yes. Okay. Well, it's going to be a good day now. We're going to spend some time learning about some things about God. Uh, We've covered four questions so far that have all dealt with God's nature. This fifth one is going to build on top of it, but before we uh, get into that, I'm going to quiz Susanna. Uh, As I've said in previous episodes, the whole purpose of this is not to show off Susanna, nor is it for me to minister to your kids. Rather, it's to show adults kind of what these sit-down sessions can look like as you sit down with your children, grandchildren, the children of your church. Our job is to pass along good doctrine, and that's what Uh, catechism teaches, but the whole point is to memorize it so that we remember these words when it matters. So this is a printed copy of the Catechism of the Christian Faith and Doctrine of the Global Methodist Church. You can find it at Seedbed. I usually have a link to it in the show notes to these episodes, so you might consider making a purchase. Uh, You might also keep your eyes out. David De Silva, who's a, a guest of this show, he's a professor He's coming out with um, uh, something that's that's meant to come alongside this and show how good the theology is here. So we'll be purchasing that soon, probably, and and maybe reading through that. But anyway, um, at the start of each episode, I'm going to just quiz Susanna on three questions, and we've now covered four. So Susanna, let me ask you, this is question two. Who is God? God is the one true, holy, and living God, the eternal spirit, the holy trinity. All right, so if any of those questions or any of those words are not familiar to you, you can go back to episode two in this series and we read through the scriptures and talk through the meanings of these words. Question three What is the mystery of the Trinity? God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, distinct, distinct, but inseparable, eternally one in essence and power. Okay, not a single flaw there. Very good. Hope you remember what distinct means. I won't quiz you on it right now, but make sure you know these words as you're reciting them. All right, question four. How is God almighty? God is infinite in power, wisdom, justice, goodness, and love. Okay, that was probably my favorite episode that we've done so far. We looked at those five qualities and many scripture readings, and and it went quite well. So I hope you enjoyed that one as well. Today, we're covering question five. What is God's relation to heaven and earth? So do you think that God is at all related to heaven and earth? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll study what that means. Why don't you read the answer to us? God is creator, sovereign, and preserver of all things. Okay, so there's probably one unfamiliar word in there. Let's let's talk about the words that you do know. What does creator mean, do you think? Maker. He makes everything. I think that fits just fine. Okay, yeah. Um, what about preserver? Do you know what that one means? Nope. Okay. Um, does mama ever preserve things in the kitchen? Mm-hmm. What is... What does she do when she preserves? Mm. You don't know? Okay, so when she preserves things, she makes them so that they don't go bad because food on its own will go bad, right, Mm -hmm. if you don't preserve it? In ancient times, they didn't have refrigerators, so they used spices to keep the meat from spoiling. Yeah, okay, so they would use spices sometimes, but also jarring and canning are other ways of preserving meat. So there are multiple ways to preserve not just meat, but all kinds of things so that they don't go bad. God also is a preserver. What do you think he's preserving? Us? Yeah, yeah. Without God's continued care, we would fall apart and die. This whole world would fall apart. The only reason that that you see anything, that we continue breathing, that our hearts continue beating is because God preserves us. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about that middle word. What, what, how did you pronounce that? Sovereign. Okay, do you have any, any inkling of what sovereign means? Actually, you, you do, because 
I had you look it up, didn't oh, I? Yeah. So why don't you read to us a definition out of your dictionary? One, a person or group of people with supreme authority over a state, especially a king or a queen. And then another one, independent, self-governing, self-gov- and self-governing. And then two, having supreme rank or power. And three, high supreme. Yeah, high supreme. Okay. Oh. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that is. Yeah, those words are all good. So these describe God. He is the highest ranking authority in the universe. He is independent. Nobody can make him do something he doesn't want to do. Nobody outranks him. So God is the God of history. Let me ask you this. Um, this is something that, that many grown-ups are confused about. Are there things that we can do to ruin God's plans? No. Okay. So God has designed how it is that history should be, what should happen, when it should happen. There are people who argue about how much God has planned, but once God has planned on something, there is nothing that we can do to ruin it, right? Yes. Okay. Is there anything that we can do to frustrate God or surprise God? No. No, probably not. No, if God is omniscient, we haven't covered that word, but that means he knows everything, then that means that nothing happens that surprises him or ruins his plans or or messes with him. So when we're saying that he is sovereign... We're saying that he is in control of all of history. Nobody can mess with him. Nobody can foil his plans that that he's completely in charge. Is that good news? Mm Mm-hmm. But he is angry at some people. Sure. So there are things that happen that make him angry but not surprised. Whenever people fail to obey his law or practice obedience, he is not surprised. This, This is not something that he planned that we would be and then we have somehow ruined it for him. Rather, he is angry because he is righteous and and he deserves better, right? Mm Mm-hmm, like Jonah. Yeah, okay. I read that whole, almost that whole book today. Yeah. So is there anything else about this question you want to talk about before we look at our scripture readings? What's that thing at the end? Where it said Earth, what's that? Oh, that's a question mark. It just cut off for us, oh, so don't worry about that. That looked weird. Yeah. All right. Let's let's go on to uh, our first reading. Susie, would you read this to us, please? No. Wait. Actually, before we do that, I realize the first reading is the whole first chapter of Genesis. We covered that in episode one. We read through all of it. So if you need to review that, then please do but it's just the first six days of creation. So actually, before we do the first reading, let's talk about the first six days of creation. What are the things that you think are important for people to know about how God created the heavens and the earth? So that they know how powerful God is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, how, how did God create things? What did he do to create them? He used his voice. Yeah, he spoke by his powerful word, and all things were created. Was his creation when he created was it orderly or was it kind of chaotic and crazy orderly yeah he was very orderly and and organized in how he did things he separated things from each other he created inhabitants for each realm that he created so these are things that are important to know about god and how he is creator redeemer sustainer sovereign all these things okay now let's look at uh the next reading after that Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God, in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. That's from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. Okay, what what do you get out of this? Uh, what What is this saying to us? What does it want us to know? It's saying... The Lord is God in heaven above. It's That's connecting to sovereign. Yeah, this is kind of a complicated thing because Jesus, whenever he was here on earth, 
He said, for right now authority has been given to Satan. He's called the ruler of the power of the air. And in some ways, he is in charge here on earth. But then he also tells a story about binding a strong man and pillaging his house. And he says that's what he came to do, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to rob Satan's house. His house is the world right now. But we're here to rob it because God is the true ruler. He's the true owner. Um, and so we're also told of a, a, a thousand-year period where Satan will be bound and Christ will reign directly on earth. People argue about if that's right now. But one thing we know is God rules, owns everything. And why are we so sure that he rules or owns this world? Because he made it. That is exactly the right answer. When you make something, you own it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly, God didn't need anybody's help. He made earth and the heavens, both realms. Now, can we see the heavenly realms? No. Okay, but are they real? Yes. Okay, so God owns them, the, the heavenly realms, and then also owns this realm, and he is Lord. What, what does Lord mean? Boss. Yeah, he is the boss. He is the owner. He is the sovereign of all this, even if people don't know it. He lets people be ignorant of this, but just because people don't know it doesn't mean he's not actually the boss, right? Right. Okay. Anything else to say about this reading here? I think we did a good job. Okay. Well, let's go on to the next one. Susie, could you read this one to us? And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. And that's from 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23. Okay. So what, what do we need to absorb from this? What does it teach us? There is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth ben beneath. Okay. That's from Sovereign, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's alone, he's independent. Very good. Yeah, when we're thinking about the three qualities, what were they? They were sovereign, preserver, and creator, right? Yeah. Uh, That's not in your dictionary. That was uh, in the question. Oh. Yeah. So he's sovereign, creator, uh, sustainer. Okay, so yeah, this is part of him being sovereign. Preserver. Oh, yeah, excuse me, not sustainer, preserver. Thank you. Okay. So are in the heavenly realms, are there other gods? Are there other spiritual beings? Yes. Okay, so in the Bible, in the Hebrew, the word for gods is just inhabitants of the spiritual realm. That's what it means. And the word is Elohim. Can you say that? Elohim. Yeah, so Elohim is God. So uh, there's a weird story whenever Samuel is resurrected from the dead by a witch in Endor. You've actually read that. You just forgot about it. And he yeah, is called... It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, he's called an Elohim there. Uh, so there are angels, there are principalities and powers. They are all considered Elohim. But God is the one who sits enthroned in the highest heavens, and there is no God like him. So what, what are some differences between God and the other gods, the Lord of heaven and earth and the other powers? God is God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords. Okay, good. You've learned this language. He's at the top of each of these categories. There, there, there are lots of beings that fit into these categories, Lord, King, God, he sits at the top of all of them. Nobody else can even compare to him. And the Bible is like the book of books. <laughs> I like that, Bi yeah. Bible means book. So if you're saying Holy Bible, it just means holy book. Yeah, that's a good thing to know, right? So um, what we're talking about here, there though, is God is unique. There is no other like him. Did God ever do anything that no other gods could ever do? Yes. What? He created the whole earth. Yeah, that's exactly right. He is able. He His power is beyond any comparison. Yes, there are other gods. They are not worthy of worship because the Lord alone of heaven and earth, he 
made us. He made all that is seen and unseen, right? And so that's why he alone is worthy of our praise and worship. Didn't he make the angels too? Absolutely, yes. He made everything except for, yeah, the 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 Son and the Holy Spirit. The three of them are co-eternal, right? Mm-hmm. So that means none of them were made. They are uncreated uh, in unity in the Godhead. Yeah, so, but outside of the Trinity, the triune God, uh, everything else was made by the triune God. Okay. And, go ahead. Is the... Tr- does triune, triune mean like Trinity? Yeah, yeah. The triune okay. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. You ready to go on to the next reading? Okay, go ahead. Thou, even thou art Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth of all and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all in the host of heaven worshipeth thee good job susanna okay so what qualities does it pick up on god among the creator preserver sovereign what do you see in here preserver okay where is that at and thou preservest them all very good yeah so does it also talk about him being a creator? Yes. Thou hast made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein. Okay. The seas. Yeah. He made everything. Good. Good. So uh, where was that from? What scripture? Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 6. I've read that. Oh, okay. I guess I was zoned out for a second. Okay. So this is um, another verse that goes to show that God created everything, but also He preserves everything. And remind me, what does preserve mean? Make it good so it won't go bad. Yeah, okay, I like it. Anything else to say about this reading? No, not to me. Okay, well let's go on to the next one then. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. That's Psalm 8, verse 1. Okay, so what, where does that intersect with today's question? Sovereign. Yeah, what makes you think that God is sovereign in all this? How excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glory above the heavens. Okay, so there's the earth, then there's the heavens, and then God's glory is above even the heavens. That's that's where he dwells in unapproachable light. That's what Paul calls it. So um, that shows he is exceptional among all of the creation, all of the world. He is beyond compare. He sits outside of the created order even, but even though he sits outside of the created order, he's he's not on earth, he's not even contained in heaven, does that mean that he doesn't care about us? No. No, why does he he care about us? Because he loves us. Yeah, why? He wants us to be like him. He... Well, he created us to be like Mm -hmm. him, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. he gave us his image. And then also in the heavenly realms, he also gave his image to his angels and, and many of the, the creatures there. So rather than create us and leave us alone, he wants to be with us. He wants to be reunited with us. He's, he's created a way for that to happen, and now it's, it's for us to, to follow and obey, right? Mm-hmm. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Yep, that's right. Okay. Anything else to be said about that one? That was kind of a short, easy one. I can't see it, so I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Go ahead. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. 
That's from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. Okay. So devise means to plan. So do you ever make plans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of a normal, natural thing to do, right? Uh huh. And in different kind of sports, that one team and another team will make plans with each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when it's talking about devising a plan, that's saying that we humans like to try and control things, right? But are we really? Are we in control? No. No, we're not. So who is? God. Yeah. So he is sovereign. That's what it's kind of getting to. And there's nothing that we can do to interrupt his plans, and there's nothing that we can do to make plans that override his, you know, over, to, to overcome his. He, he can't be overpowered by us, right? Mm-hmm. But can't you take care of your dog and be its boss and... So God lets us not be owners, but we are stewards. And that means everything belongs to God, but he gives us some of his authority to rule. Yeah, that means like he gives us some of, he lets us take care of the stuff he made. Mm -hmm. But Jesus makes fun of a man who was making a lot of money, who's doing well, growing crops. And so he says, oh, I'm so comfortable. I'm going to build a big storehouse and I'm going to store all my goods, and everything's going to be great. And Jesus says, you fool, don't you know that the Lord is going to kill you before any of that can happen? And so uh, in James also we're told that we shouldn't talk very boldly about our plans. We should say, if the Lord wills it, this is what I plan to do. And we need to know that it's God, the Lord alone, directs our steps. It's He who decides what we can and can't do how long we will live, all of that stuff. The the feeling like we are in control is an illusion, that God is the God of history, and He decides. And sometimes, this is something that people argue about, but sometimes God even makes us do things that we don't want to do, or keeps us from doing things that we do want to do. So there's a story in the Old Testament about a king, Nebuchadnezzar. All of a sudden, God makes him go crazy, and he goes out into the woods and he lives in the woods for several years, and he grows like feathers and talons like uh, a bird, and he runs around eating grass. It's a pretty crazy story, but the Bible is full of many God calling many prophets before they even chose him. The Bible is full of uh, God punishing people and making them do things that they don't want to do, like Pharaoh hardening his heart. And so uh, we need to understand that when we say God is sovereign— to one degree or another, for many of us, that means that we're not in control of our lives, that God is. Okay, anything else to be said about that? What book was that from again that you talked about, Nebuchadnezzar? That would have been in the book of Daniel. Okay, then I haven't read it. No, you haven't, but we'll get to it. We'll get there. Yeah. Let's do another scripture reading. Go ahead, Susie. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. That's from Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Okay, so where does that intersect? Creator. Yeah, he's definitely focusing. He formed us from the womb. He makes everything. He stretched forth the heavens. What is that word there? Alone. Alone, that means he is sovereign. Nobody else did it with him. He did it all on his own. And then to make it clear, he says that spreadeth abroad the earth by... Myself. Okay, so that's what makes God unique and worthy of worship and praise because he didn't need anybody's help. He did it all by himself, right? Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, that's a holy day because that's the day God rested. Yeah, the, the, the stop it day, the Shabbat, the Sabbath. All right, anything else to say about this reading? But when you, the stop it day, once you preached on the Sabbath on a, uh, Sunday in you said the Sabbath just means stop it. Yeah, that's right. So just stop your work. Stop it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a good good sermon right there. I'll let you give it mm-hmm. someday. All right, let's read this one. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth in, not in temples made with hands. That's from Acts chapter 17, verse 24. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Why does it, why does it tell us that? Because he doesn't. <laughs> there are some people who think that you can actually harm God or um, ruin things if you destroy a church or a Bible or holy stuff. There's nothing you can do to harm God because he sits enthroned in the highest heavens, right? Mm-hmm. And so what this is focusing on is that God made everything. There is nothing you can do to harm him. He is sovereign. He Not only did he create everything, but he doesn't even dwell in the things that he's created here. He's, he's above and beyond all that. But didn't you say he doesn't, he doesn't, he's higher than the heavens? Yeah, I said that. Yeah, so... Uh, in the Old Testament, sometimes he's called El Elyon, which means he's enthroned in the highest heavens. Whenever um, the angels came and they sung to the shepherds on when Jesus was born, they the very first line is, Glory to God in the highest heavens and peace on earth among all men. So whether he's actually above the heavens or he's in the highest place in the heavens, that's a distinction without a difference. It really doesn't matter. The key is that he's over it all. Okay. Anything else to say about that one? He's a creator. Yeah, yeah, he is. God made the world mm-hmm. and all things that they're, they're in. That means everything in it. We already talked about what Lord means, mm-hmm. right? Boss. So I think this is ground we've covered pretty well. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. 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 Okay, where's that from? Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Okay. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Who is that? Who are the ones who love God? The holy people. Who's that? Christians. Yeah, us, hopefully. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Who are the called? Who has God called? Us. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's saying those that love God, those who are called, we're the same people. So, and all things, it says, work for the good to the, to, for us. So, here it's saying that God creates good things for us. So, where does that intersect with the, the starting question? That God is creator, sovereign, preserver. Can anything take us from God's hand? No. Okay, no, nothing can take us from the love of God, and God is going to prosper us. He's going to bless us, maybe not with money, maybe not with long life, but the Lord is going to bless us. And can anything or anybody ruin that? No. Okay, so this is tied into God's sovereignty. God alone is in charge of history. There is nobody that can take us from his hand. There is nobody that can make him stop loving us, stop blessing us. He is working for the good of all of us who love God. Is that good news? Mm-hmm. But if we walk away f- from God and start doing evil things, th- then he wants to punish us. Well, he will punish us. So he doesn't want to and not do it. He He punishes the wicked. Mm-hmm. And, so, um, and he lets us walk away if we want. That's part mm-hmm. of him making us in his image. Mm-hmm. And we have many questions that deal with this later on. So, uh, y'all, I know that I'm preaching some things that go against maybe what a lot of folks heard growing up. The Catechism explains all this, so I'd urge you to subscribe to this series so that you can track these things out with us. But everything is interconnected, you'll see. All right, Susie, anything else to say about any of this? 
Nope. Okay. We've got another one from Revelation. Take it, take it away. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Tell us where it's from. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Okay. So it says, The Lord is worthy to receive glory and honor. Why? And power? Why? Because he is sovereign. It didn't say that. And he has created all things. Okay, that's why it said he is <laughs> the creator of everything. So it's normal that if he creates us, we should glorify him, right? Mm -hmm. He's, uh huh. And in this reading, it has both sovereign and creator. Yeah, what, where do you see sovereignty in here? Thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power. And you see sovereignty in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because God alone is sovereign. He's the only God that we should worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's that's what I was focused Okay, very good. Um, so why were we created, does it say in this? For thy pleasure. Who's thy? God's. Okay, so we were created for his pleasure, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why he's rightfully angry when we choose sin. Does sin give God pleasure? No. Okay. So we're failing at our number one job when we sin. We're failing to be creatures in whom God can delight. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, it says Satan is like a lion prowling around, around waiting for someone to come so he can snatch them into sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Satan is always working to undo God's plans, but as we've already talked about, can anyone undo God's plans? No. Very good. All right, now let's go back to the confession of faith. Uh, this is what has all these different questions summarized in here. We focused on different parts of it. I think you're a good enough reader to read this whole thing. Go ahead. We believe in the one true holy and living God, eternal spirit, who is creator, sovereign, and preserver of all things, visible and invisible. He is infinite in power, wisdom, justice, goodness, and love, and rules with gracious regard for the well-being and salvation of men. To the glory of his name, we believe in the one God... Re we believe the one God. We believe the one God reveals himself as the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Distinct but inseparable, eternally one in essence and power. Very good, Susanna. So we've we've covered most of that ground. All of it's fitting together well for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think we've covered all the material for today, so is there anything else you'd like to say before we cut off the cameras? Mm, nope. Okay. Well, this has been fun, folks. We've enjoyed uh, going through this material. We hope it's been a benefit to you as well. We hope... This results in a lot of conversation for you and your loved ones around God's nature, especially uh, His sovereignty. That's kind of the word of this episode. How is it that God is sovereign over you in your life? Where is it that you're trying to take control and assume more responsibility than is yours? How are you trying to be an owner and not a steward? How are you not trusting God, and, and where do you need to, to trust Him more? All of these are good reflections. I hope, I hope you keep reflecting on these after this video ends. May God bless you as you continue to attend upon these things. They're very important things. And if you are in a global Methodist church in particular, and you know that other people need to be thinking about these doctrinal things, then make sure to recommend this material. And of course, if you have feedback on this, you can always email me at plainspokenpod at gmail.com. And then also we read the comments. So we're going to say goodbye now. Say goodbye, Susanna. Bye-bye. All right. God bless you folks. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.